welcome to another series um, in our teaching on spiritual gifts called Living Beyond Ourselves. Um, we've already looked at the idea of, uh, in the beginning, how important our attitude is. Um, from Philippians chapter 2, we looked at the fact that we've received blessings, uh, the fact that we have an example, the fact that we also receive recognition and honour, that's uh, God's purpose in eternity for us in rewarding faithfulness and we've also looked at uh, last time from the idea of 1 Corinthians 12 some core truths about spiritual gifts firstly that uh, spiritual gifts are given to every Christian 1 Corinthians 12 6 that these gifts are given to build up the church the body of Christ 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 and then the third core truth that gifts should be used wisely to accomplish God's work, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 28 to 30. Today I want to um, begin looking at uh, a framework for helping us understand our spiritual gifts. Can you imagine that at Christmas time, if we had a Christmas tree up and there was lots of presents that were under the tree, but somehow they remain unwrapped, despite the time and the appreciation and the effort and thoughtfulness that have gone in to prepare those gifts we left them under the table well of course that that would be unthinkable to us uh, we would want to open those gifts we would use them and that's exactly the same when it comes to spiritual gifts they're designed to build up the body of christ to build up the, the kingdom of god and so it's important that that we actually unwrap them and that we unpack them so over this video and the next couple of videos where we're really getting into the meat of the gifts we're beginning to unpack and there there will be notes for you to download for personal discussion and also for group group guides if you're meeting together with others we encourage you to look at that and download those so what are five kind of guidelines or or core things over the next few weeks as we look together well, guideline one is that when we're looking at our gifts, we have to explore the possibilities. Many people simply don't know what the gifts are and what they're listed at in Scripture. So many times when I've travelled to different countries and I've asked people, how many spiritual gifts are there? Consider for a moment how you would answer that question. Lots of people will turn directly to 1 Corinthians 12 and think about, oh, there are nine spiritual gifts. But actually, when you begin to explore scripture, there's at least 27 spiritual gifts that can be listed. So I think it's important that our first guideline is that we explore the possibilities about gifts. Because maybe it's just a little bit wider than we had originally thought or even that we've been taught. The second guideline is that we examine our gifts. Scripture says that we should have... Uh, in Romans chapter 12 uh, an honest and over, uh, sober assessment of what our gifts should be then we can actually use them in accordance with the faith God has given us so we have to examine the gifts and we'll unpack some of those and your notes will develop some of those further the third guideline is actually observing your reactions the truth is we're all wired differently we all have different gifts we are interdependent we need one another some people have a real gift with children some people have a gift with youth some people have a gift in music some people are gifted in areas of administration some in pastoral counseling so we have to observe our reactions and that's a good indicator in terms of where we might be gifted to serve fourth guideline is uh, about evaluating your effectiveness there's no point us saying that we are a great teacher with children when actually the children are bored when we teach there's no point us saying we have a great gift of prophecy but we never hear from God and we never speak it out to encourage and build up others there's no point saying we're a great evangelist if no one ever comes to faith when we talk so evaluating our effectiveness is an important way to discover what we're actually gifted to do. The fifth guideline is anticipate confirmation from others. 
we should expect that others will acknowledge our gifts, be aware of our gifts, and therefore we should expect confirmation from others. In fact, many times people will recognise our giftings and our abilities long before we do. So those five guidelines are exploring the possibilities, examining your gifts, observe your reactions, evaluate your effectiveness and anticipate confirmation from others. So let's return to guideline number one, explore the possibilities. And this is where we have to unpack and unwrap some of the things about gifts. There are four primary passages that talk about the gifts in the New Testament. They are Romans chapter 12 verses 3 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and then 13. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16. And 1 Peter 4, 11 to 16. I also think the Old Testament includes some gifts. So for example, there's a gift that's very rarely recognised or acknowledged. is the gift of craftsmanship. In Exodus 31, we see that a number of people are anointed by the Spirit, receive the Spirit and God's given ability in the area of craftsmanship. That's a gift I think we'll come back and re-look at when we come to looking at the gifts specifically. So when we look at these passages together, um, we can see this whole list that should be on the screen for you now. Things like wisdom, knowledge, faith, healings, miracles, discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues, apostle, helps, prophecy, all the ones that you can see on screen. And also there's a couple of others listed that may be new to you, you may not have thought about them before. Gift of celibacy, not one that people commonly ask for. The gift of missionary, the gift of intercession, the gift of voluntary poverty, again, 1 Corinthians 13 may uh, allude to that. Martyrdom, 1 Corinthians 13 may allude to that. And the one in craftsmanship from Exodus 31. So you can begin to see when we explore the possibilities of the gifts, there actually is a wide range that's listed in Scripture. And so we must begin to think maybe it's wider than what we think. And in fact, I'm not even sure the Scripture is meant to be exhaustive because the Bible is written in a particular context, it's written in a particular answering questions that people are, are responding. For example, Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthians and trying to explain to them how best to function as a body. So they're in a particular cultural context. Maybe God has a wider perspective for these gifts, things that we haven't considered before. So there's a number of different ways that we can look at the gifts. and. Having been around church a long time, we can see different people classify them in different ways. For the purpose of our study, I'm going to break them down into primary and complementary gifts. It's not perfect, it's not the only way to look at the gifts, but I find this a helpful way because the primary gifts are areas that we might consider we can build ministries on, that can function as ministries in the church. The complementary gifts are important, they're there, but they are exactly that. They're complementary, they're designed to assist the primary gifts in their operation. They're not things that we build ministries on. So on screen now, you should see some of the areas of primary gifts. So you'll see we've further divided them into speaking gifts, service gifts, and relational gifts. Again, we're not saying this is the only way to look at it, but it may be helpful for us to consider these ways of operating in the gifts. One of the common patterns I've noticed when we look at the area of spiritual gifts is that people focus on what I call high profile gifts, the, the gifts that are most used in public and, and capture attention such as prophecy and healing. I don't want to focus on those in this particular set of studies. I'm happy to talk to anyone about them. And there's more information on them in your notes that you can download for personal use and study. But what I'd like to do is focus on some of the primary gifts that, that maybe have lesser prominence, 
but are vital in the life of the church in terms of building a church. The first of those is the gift of giving. So Romans 12 verse 8 talks about it. If your gift is giving, give generously. Now one of the challenges we face with that is scripture tells us that we're all responsible to give. That if we're part of the body of Christ, then each of us should give according to what God has given us. And that we should give it freely, that we should give it generously, that we should give it cheerfully, that we should give it systematically. So if you look at 1 Corinthians 16, for example, it talks about all of those principles. Yet, there seems to be a particular gift of giving. On screen now, you should see uh, a slide with a number of references related to giving that you can pause the video and look them up at your own leisure. So we're working on the definition that the giving is the gift of giving is the divinely given ability to contribute money and resources in a generous and cheerful manner. And usually people with this gift will manage their uh, finances and lifestyle in order to give as much as possible. Maybe you've met people like that who just seem to be so generous, always seem to give. And it's not about the amount. It's not even about the amount that they earn. But it's just their heart to give and to bless others. They will support the work of ministry, often with sacrificial giving for the sake of advancing the kingdom of God. They'll meet tangible needs that enable spiritual growth to occur. So it may be someone has a need and they will give towards that. Provide resources cheerfully and seem to be able to trust God for his provision no matter what. Maybe have a special ability to make money so they can further God's work. Sometimes pe people have this ability to make money and to use it to invest in the kingdom of God. So what sort of traits do these people have? It should be on screen for you. They're people who are stewardship orientated. They're people who are responsible. They're people who are resourceful. People who are charitable. People who trust in God and usually people who are disciplined in their giving. This is a great gift in any church, in any ministry. There are certain cautions that people with the gift of giving need to be aware of. They need to esteem their gift. They need to recognise it as valuable. They need to recognise it as a spiritual contribution to the body of Christ. It's, it's there in scripture. It's an important part of the work. They also need to remember that they don't determine what's done with the money. They don't determine the church's agenda. That's the responsibility of the leaders. Those who have the gift of giving, give and give to the leaders to determine. Need to guard against greed. It's not the acquisition of more money that becomes important. The second gift that I want to look at is found in a couple of places. Romans chapter 12 verse 7. If your gift is serving, serve them well. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 also talks about the gift of helps. And that's what I want to focus on. So on your screen you will see we define the gift of helps. is God's strength to accomplish practical and necessary tasks which free up and support the body of Christ. Meeting the needs of others willingly and joyfully. One of the mistakes I think is made in this area is when we use the term administrator or administration often I think what is in operation here is the gift of helps it's the gift that comes alongside it's a gift that will support and help others people with this gift will serve behind the scenes where needed to support the gift of ministry of others often not upfront people see the tangible and practical things that need to be done and will enjoy doing them See God's purposes and pleasure in meeting everyday responsibilities. Can attach spiritual value to practical service. Enjoy knowing what they're doing. Freeing others up to do what God has called them to do. And that's a really important principle. It's part of that interdependence that we actually need one another. So what are some of the traits of those who are living beyond themselves with the gift of helps? They're available. They're willing, they're helpful, they're reliable, they're loyal, they're, they're dependable. It's those people who have 
whatever it takes attitude and one prime example of that in scriptures is a man called Ephroditus it's in your notes in Philippians chapter 2 verses 25 to 30 he was a tireless worker who enabled Paul to accomplish his ministry the third gift that I want to look at is the gift of encouragement again is found in Romans chapter 12 in verse 8 if your gift is to encourage others be encouraging it literally means to come alongside of someone and there's a number of biblical re- references and examples where you can see this in Acts chapter 5. Barnabas was originally called Joseph but he was such an encourager that they changed his name to Barnabas which literally means son of encouragement. And so encouragement is the ability to, to reassure, to strengthen and affirm those who are discouraged or may be wavering in their faith. And we may all have times like that. We may all know people in those circumstances right now. So the gift of encouragement is really valuable in getting alongside people. People with this gift will come alongside to to strengthen those who may be discouraged. They may challenge, comfort or even confront others to trust and hope in the promises of God in their life. They may urge others to action by applying biblical truth in this situation desire to motivate others to grow emphasize God's promises and to have confidence in his will so encourages are those people who are positive motivating affirming sometimes challenging but always reassuring supportive and often will be trustworthy they're people who have confidence in others But as with all the gifts, there are certain cautions that need to be applied. People with this gift may tend to be overly optimistic or too simplistic or flattering in their approach. They need to take time to understand where others are at them and where they really need it. It's not just simply launching in. We need to take time to listen and to understand people. may just want to say positive things and avoid being confrontational when it's actually necessary it's a danger it's something we need to guard against why is it such a valuable gift because we all need it at some point in our life we all need that sense of support we all need when we're discouraged or experiencing conflict or simply the need to be appreciated so in this small sampling of the gifts we'll look at others next time but in this small sampling of gifts we see that through the gifts God meets the needs of the church when we know what we're gifted to do and God has given them for the common good then we become fruitful we become fulfilled and the body of Christ receives the ministry that God has intended God is glorified when we serve according to how he has designed us So how will you respond in using your gifts today, this week and in the future?